So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are going to be continuing with the historic rebuilds, and it's going to be the New York Knicks. So we are in the LeBron era that starts at the beginning of the 2010-2011 NBA season. Now, this season, New York went 42-40, and and the biggest move of their year was right near the trade deadline, trading for Carmelo Anthony. So here in 2K right now, at the beginning of the 2010-2011 season, we don't have Carmelo Anthony. Now, will we end up with him somehow? That is still to be determined, but this roster is pretty decent. They are led by Amari Stoudemire at this point. He is a 90 overall. Today, we're going to build around him, maybe even Carmelo Anthony, and hopefully get the Knicks championship. Of course, let me know any other video ideas you guys do have down below in the comments section. We are always looking for different series or challenges or anything you guys have. Let me know down below. I know you guys are very creative, and I definitely do appreciate it. So we've been doing a lot of these LeBron era rebuilds. I think we're almost halfway through all of the NBA teams, and we really haven't even touched into any of the other eras that are in 2K24. So if you want me to dive into any of those, let me know down below as well. But I'm very excited for this one today, man. We definitely have our work cut out for us. Let's get into it. As I mentioned to open this video, the Carmelo Anthony trade was an in-season trade. It was right near the deadline in February, and clearly it was a very big package. And uh, it's going to be hard if I want to reciprocate that in any way, shape, or form. Now, he is going to be a free agent this offseason. Maybe there's a possibility we spend some money, go out and maybe sign Carmelo Anthony. But I'm uh, I'm still TBD on kind of what I want to do with this team. So let's just go over the roster right now. Point guard spot, according to 2K, there's only one point guard on this team, and that is Raymond Felton. He's 27 years old, at an 82 overall. Is Raymond Felton some sort of star point guard? I think we all know the answer to that is no. But he's a serviceable enough player that I can definitely have him here for a year, maybe two, and we'll go from there. But it is six foot one. I thought he was a little taller. Uh, the shooting guard spot is definitely a little weak. Kalena as a bouquet is, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, is probably not my long term answer. I don't think Roger Mason is. Andy Tucker is not even a real person. So this is clearly a very big gaping hole and something we're going to have to figure out at some point in time. Small forward spot. Danilo Gallinari was in that trade with Denver. Ended up going to the Nuggets in order to get Carmelo Anthony. Now, he's only 22 years old today. Hindsight, obviously, we know Danilo Gallinari he never really turned out to be any sort of superstar. But he's a very serviceable player, and he actually just got traded in real life as well. So, he's 22. He's an 80. We're going to hopefully develop him relatively well. Wilson Chandler is here. He's only 23 out of 79. I mean, these are all pieces we're going to work hopefully end up getting better. We have Landry Fields here as well. Wayne Terry and Stephen Harrington. I'm not sure if they're both real people. I can safely assume Stephen Harrington's not, but Wayne Terry like has like an actual face versus this just bald, generic, random face that we see all the time. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Mari Stoudemire is a 90 overall. He is going to be a building block for me today. I don't really have much else to say besides that. He's very good. Uh, Sean Williams is here. He's 24. We'll see. Could be a good role player. Daniel Nelson, not real. And then the center spot is interesting. Ronnie Turioff is here. Eddie Curry is here. Than whoever the hell Herb Dinwiddie is. So uh, the center and the shooting guard spot are definitely two of our weaker positions right now. I don't think there's any long-term answers at either of those positions. So maybe we make a trade right now, but I think we'll probably wait till the offseason. But uh, I might have one or two smaller trades right now. Our first trade is going to come with the Charlotte Bobcats, and it's going to look like this. Landry Fields and Daniel Nelson are going to Charlotte. DJ Augustine and Nick Harrison are coming back here to New York. In all reality, it's a one-for-one -one player slot between Fields and Augustine. So it's really just about position of need at this point. We had three small forwards, all high enough overalls to deserve playing time. I don't have a backup point guard. DJ Augustine is going to be exactly that. So, I mean, we're swapping out literally position for position same age, same overall. It makes a lot of sense for me. And I did go ahead and check, and DJ Augustine actually has another year of team control, where Landry Fields does not, weirdly enough. He was a second-round pick in 2010, so this is technically his rookie season. I don't know if he played anywhere else before this, but uh, nonetheless, he would have been a free agent, which is something that's very, very weird. But Augustine has a year of team control. Definitely good. So that solidifies our backup point guard spot. We're going to have a solid option here with Felton and Augustine. Now there are some other issues we definitely need to address because going over kind of the contract situation here with this team, Felton is on a three-year deal. Augustine has that team option, which is nice. Both our shooting guards are going to be free agents here in Azubuke and Mason. Small forward, I'm going to have a team option on Gallinari. Chandler will be entering free agency. Don't necessarily mind paying him, though. Power forward spot, Stoudemire is on a long-term deal. Sean Williams is going to be entering free agency. And then in all likelihood, both of our centers are going to be entering free agency. So just something to keep in mind. Again, I don't want to completely blow this team up right now. But we also do have a swap with the Houston Rockets. We're swapping the worst pick. I don't really know what trade that's from. I didn't make a deal for it to happen. It's just how the... The game loads in, if you will. So just something to keep in mind. So we might have a few other trades. 
I'm not trying to abuse the Charlotte Bobcats right now, but if they're going to keep offering me really good deals, I'm going to keep taking them. We're going to be sending Eddie Curry, Herb Dinwiddie, and a 2011 second round draft pick to Charlotte for Boris Diaw and Eduardo Najera. Now, this is an interesting one for me because not really either big positions of need for power forward or small forward, but it's going to give us a little bit more depth and hopefully allow us to go ahead and make some other trades. So Eddie Curry is 27, but he is a 71 overall. He's on an expiring contract, and he's making over $11 million. Really not a recipe for long-term success. So move him to Charlotte. They take a first-round, or excuse me, a second-round pick. We get Boris Diaw locked up on a long-term deal, which is, of course, very, very nice for me. So he'll be backing up Amari Stoudemire. It just means Sean Williams, who is expiring, is also expendable. Same thing can be said about Noir and Hara, because honestly, we don't need three small forwards. We've kind of already proved that. So a few more deals coming. I tried really hard to make a trade for somebody not named Sasha Vujicic. I know I get him a decent amount in these videos, and I promise you in the future I will try my best to not do that. I tried to trade for three different shooting guards, weren't named Sasha Vujicic. Unfortunately, I'm just not giving up a first-round pick for something that's not a long-term option for me. So, we're going to make this deal here with Los Angeles, and it is going to be our final trade. Roger Mason, Eduardo Nohera, two future second-round picks for Sasha Vujicic, and a first-round pick in 2013. Why am I getting a first-round pick back in this deal? I have no idea, but when good things happen to me in this piece of shit game, I don't really question it. So, welcome to the team, Sasha. We are excited to have you. So you might be saying, well, what happened to your backup center spot? Well, it's really simple. I just moved Sean Williams from the backup four to the backup five. His overall went down one. It is not the end of the world. The man is six foot ten. Um, so now we kind of have a 10-man rotation that I'm relatively comfortable with. I mean, again, shooting guard spot is still a little bit weak. And again, I don't really think either of these are long-term options. But they're stop gaps. They'll be able to fill in the space for year one. And I am excited about that because I don't really want to be a bad team. You know, I think this roster probably would have been around anywhere from a 7 to a 10 seed, maybe even a little bit lower if we got unlucky. Now I think we're a playoff contender, so let's set the rotation. All right, after a few more trades than I maybe thought we were going to make originally when we opened up this video, we are ready to kick off year one here in New York, and I, I'm excited. I think this team could be fun. I don't know if we're a true top-tier contender, but we have some fun pieces in place, and it's going to be an exciting season. So the backcourt's going to be Raymond Felton and Sasha Vujicic again. Probably not a long-term backcourt for me, but it's definitely something I can work with here for the first season. You got Gallinari here starting at the three, Stoudemire at the four, and then Ronnie Terrioff as our starting center. The bench is actually a lot better than what I was expecting it to be for one season. I'll live with this. Wilson Chandler, my sixth man. DJ Augustine follows him. You got Boris Diaw in here. Kalena Azabuke, and then Sean Williams as our nine and our ten. So... It's not, as I mentioned, any sort of elite team. There's a lot of good teams in this Eastern Conference right now. I mean, you got the Bucks, Bucks, you got the Bulls, you have the Celtics, you have the Heat. I mean, you have all these teams that are going to be really, really big pains in the asses for us. But nonetheless, it is going to be a fun season, and I will see you guys at the end of it. 40 and 42. That's how we wrap up the first season here in New York, and we were relatively mid. And quite honestly, I wouldn't really expect much more than that. I mean, we're probably in the playoffs, and maybe actually ending up with 40 wins is going to hurt us more in the long run than if we ended up with, say, 27. But I'm happy about what we built. I think this could be a fun offseason. LeBron James, first year in Miami, is your MVP. John Wall, rookie of the year, is in D.C. Manu Ginobili, sixth man. Dwight Howard, Jadipoy, Drew Holiday, most improved. Tom Thibodeau. Coach of the year. Wow, were the Heat not even the one seed? They were not. They're the two seed. Interesting. Um, okay, here are the standings. We are in the playoffs, as I suspected. We're going to have the Celtics in round one, which is not my favorite matchup because although they're a little bit old, the big three is still there. Let's dive into some stats on the season. See how everybody played. Amari Stoudemire was very, very good for us. About 24 points, eight and a half boards, one and a half assists, 55% from the field. You truly do love to see it. Raymond Felton, kind of our second option as a scorer. Danilo Gallinari, Sasha Vujicic, Wilson Chandler, Augustine Diaw, Azabuke Turioff. And Williams. Boards per game was Amari Stoudemire and assists was Felton. Actually, had nine dishes. I didn't even see that. Um, okay, so we do have the Celtics here in round one. As I mentioned, they're a little bit older besides Rondo, but um, oh my God, I forgot Shaq is here. But they're still really good. And honestly, I don't suspect that we'll really be any any chance of winning this series. Have any chance, if you will. We're down 3 0. And uh, wow, we actually won a game. But uh, okay, we won another game. And that is all she wrote. So we forced the Celtics to six games. I guess maybe that's impressive, but. It's not going to do it. And did, oh my God, did I just see a blown 3 1 lead? LeBron, holy shit. Finals MVP. Did the Denver Nuggets blow a 3 1 lead? Maybe that's enough to run Carmelo Anthony out of town. Never know. Just saying. Uh, player retirement. Shaq calls it a career. John Howard, Kurt Thomas, Stackhouse. These are all relatively similar every single year. Historic changes. Uh, so we finally have one for a team that we're rebuilding. So we're going to be changing the logo, the uniforms, and the floor here in New York. So you see the Knicks logo now. Just look at the top right hand corner. You see the logo now. It is now a little bit lighter. 
How exciting. Um, draft lottery time. Um, again, I know we have a swap on something. I don't know. I, I The swap shit confuses the hell out of me. I know people have tried to explain it to me. I'm just going to see what pick we end up with. Uh, and we don't have our, that pick. But that pick did end up at number three. So, yeah, I guess that sucks. And we're at number 19. Okay, cool. So, uh, Mike D'Antoni was the head coach here. Any chance Popovich would have any interest? I mean, we are in New York. We have a lot of money. Nope, he does not. I didn't think so. Um, Stauffer could be an option for me. Look, I have nothing wrong with Mike D'Antoni. I just, I don't know if I can make an upgrade. Why the hell wouldn't I? Eh. Like, see, these ratings don't really excite me. So, you know what? This is going to be a video where we go out and get Stauffer. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to blow my entire budget on going to get him. And welcome to New York, Mike. Okay, so it is draft time. We do have a first-round pick. It's not nearly as good as, I think, the third overall pick that Houston has. But number 19 is definitely not nothing. So we have a few different avenues we could explore with this draft pick, whether we want to trade for somebody else, go out, draft somebody, or even trade up. I'm not sure yet. I've decided that I'm going to stick at pick number 19. I thought maybe trading up could be an option because I want to get one of the big men in this draft. And, uh, yeah, I just really don't have the assets without giving up future first-round picks. And I'm not going to do that. So we will sit at number 19. We will see who's available for us there. We'll look at the summary so far. It is Kawhi Leonard, Jimmy Butler, J.D. House Jr., whoever the hell that is. The original number one overall pick, Kyrie Irving, fell to five. Vucevic was somebody I did have my eye on. He would have been obviously a really nice addition and probably would have filled out our center spot long term. But again, wasn't an option for us there. And uh, Valanciunas was kind of my other guy. He ended up going number 11. To the Warriors. So, uh, yeah, oh, Tristan Thompson even could have been a fun option, but all the centers are going right now. Bismack Biombo, I guess, maybe could be a replacement, but Tobias Harris is sitting here. Feels like maybe a little bit more of a responsible pick. Unless there's an avenue where I can maybe trade for one of the big men that has already been selected. Now, I know it's a possibility. I'm not saying it's a likelihood, but it is definitely something. That can... What? Is it a glitch? Sometimes when I make trades in the draft, it feels like it's a lot easier to like get a better return. You know what I'm saying? Like, There's no reason that the Milwaukee Bucks should be offering me what they just did. I could go out and just trade for Valanciunas, but why would I not just take Andrew Bogut for literally nothing? I mean, maybe they don't want to pay him, but he's 26, not 36. I don't get that, but I'm going to take this deal. I mean, if you guys want to screw yourselves over, have at it. I mean, I did not think that was going to be an option. But I will definitely take it. So Andrew Bogut, welcome to New York. Going to be our new starting center. So now we have some decisions to make. And not in terms of the options. I mean, Gallinari, Augustine clearly coming back. Terry off even picks up his $4.5 million option. Uh, and then Wayne Terry, not going to be coming back. Okay, cool. Qualifying Chandler, 100% getting qualified. And now we look at free agency. We talked about the idea of maybe going out and trying to make a play for Carmelo Anthony. And it is definitely still an idea. We take a look at the options he has on the table so far. Looks like he might be going back to Denver, at least leaning that way. They're offering him a five-year, $100 million deal, basically about $20 million AAV, maybe even a little bit more. So um, we really don't have any money right now. So, I mean, I know the Bogut contract didn't help us, but if we want to make a play for Carmelo, we're going to have to clear up a lot of money. And I just don't know if I want to do that right now. So what I might do instead is maybe try to make a trade and maybe try to trade for another starter, whether that be a new star shooting guard, whatever the option may be. I'm definitely interested in doing so because here's my thought process right now is we have our star in Amari Stoudemire. Now, is he a number one on a championship team? I don't really know. We just picked up, I don't want to say a star center, but an above average, maybe even all-star level center in Andrew Bogut. I'm comfortable with Felton. He had a good season for us. Gallinari maybe isn't quite there yet in terms of development, but another year probably should help his case. It's really the shooting guard spot that's just hurting us. And while it might hurt to lose Wilson Chandler, I think our bench is probably good enough with Augustine and Diao, kind of as that one-two punch off of it. So if I lose Chandler, I'm willing to do that in order to gain a starter. Now we just have to really go out and resign him. So what is his price going to be? Because I cannot imagine it is going to be cheap. So let me just go find Wilson Chandler. And uh, he is right here. And I don't even have bird rights on him. God bless you 2K. So I guess I'm just going to be waiting until he gets some sort of offer from somebody at this point in time. I do have to figure out some backups. Uh, I have to figure out a backup shooting guard. I do have to figure out a new backup small forward. And I'm pretty much good everywhere else. So uh, let's look at the options on the table. Guy like OJ Mayo could be fun. Shannon Brown is here. He's only 25. Aaron Aflalo. All of these are fun ideas. Maybe bring in a guy, Aaron Aflalo, A plus three point shot. He is restricted. Would they match it? Got Tracy McGrady here. I could bring back Vujicic, but I already kind of opened the video by telling you guys, which I do generally believe that I get him a lot. I don't want to do it again. So a guy like Aaron Aflalo could be a fun option for me. Let's see if we can take a flyer on him and he comes in. Beautiful. Uh, Sean Williams can go. Everybody else can go. Clearly not going to renounce Wilson Chandler, and hopefully we get him. Okay, that actually takes care of that. Um, I want to make sure I'm able to get him back. So, oh, wait. Am I actually going to? 
Okay, that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was. Let's find a trade. Oh my god. Oh, I'm not happy about what I just did. <sighs> I'm not happy about what I just did at all because I think I overpaid. And I think you guys will agree with me. Uh, I gave up Wilson Chandler, Ronnie Turioff in four first round picks. Yes, you heard me right. Four. Literally everything I had left in order to get Monte Ellis. The, I, I needed a shooting guard, right? And Monte Ellis clearly fills that role. Giving us a guy who just averaged 23 points a game. So I'm very excited to have Monte Ellis here. I think I did overpay. Hopefully he doesn't come back and bite me in the ass. But I needed another guy who could score the basketball. And we went out and got one. So now, instead of needing one bench position, I need two. So I need to figure out a backup center and a backup small forward. And it is not getting easier for me anytime soon. So now my question is, is there any way Andy Tucker has any sort of value? Anybody want to be an idiot and just give me a first-round draft pick? I didn't think so. But... The Warriors want to give me two, so I guess maybe that helps a little bit. Not really. Uh, what it is going to allow me to do is bring back Stasha Vujicic and probably trade him immediately. Uh, and then now we have slim pickings here for our backup center spot. Jason Collins is probably going to have to do it for one year. He's 32. He'll probably go down to like a 72, 73 overall, but... I guess I, I, I kind of reap what came to me, right? I mean, I did that. It's my fault. I got to live with it. Um, so now it comes, I mean, do I maybe even move Vujicic to the backup three? I mean, he's six foot seven, but I'm not just going to do that for no reason unless there's no other option for me. So if there's a small forward here, the fact that I can get DeAndre Jordan is just straight up ridiculous. I'm not going to do it. It feels a little bit like a scumbag move. You guys know it all too well. Dante Jones is 30. Matt Bonner, good three-point shooter. Um, yeah, there's nothing here. Daquan Cook's 24. He's 6'5". <sighs> I mean, Vujicic is good. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, what happens to his overall if I move him to small forward? He goes up one. Fuck it. Why the hell not? We'll leave him here. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Even though maybe it was a little broke. Um, all right, so we brought in some new faces, some new stars, and uh, maybe we heard a little bit on the depth, but uh, I'm very happy with this team. We'll see you guys at the start of year two. We're ready to kick off year two here in New York. I can say this. The team has definitely improved from last season. The starting five is looking much better, at least on paper, and hopefully goes ahead and uh, can give us a little bit more playoff success than what we had last year, losing in the first round to the Celtics in six games. So it is as follows. Raymond Felton returns as my point guard. New addition here in Monte Ellis. Gallinari is just not progressing. I'm not really sure what's up with that, but the guy's going to stay at an 81 overall and not really put up very impressive numbers. He's going to be traded, right? I mean, there's... There's really no purpose to continuing to do the same thing over and over. I don't know. We'll find out. Stoudemire is still a 90 overall. Clearly our best player. And the new addition here in Andrew Bogut, who we got for quite literally nothing, going to be my starting center. Bench unit, maybe a little bit weaker than last year, but still got some good pieces here, led by DJ Augustine as their six men. Boris Diaw follows him. Aaron Oflalo, newly signed. Good three-point shooter off the bench. Brought back Sasha Vujicic. And then, yeah, I knew Jason Collins was going to be a low 70 overall. It is what it is. You got to live with it for one season. But Bogut's playing 32 out of the 48 center minutes a night. We can get away with it, hopefully. I'll see you guys at the end of year number two. We were better than last year, but not by much. 47 and 35. That is how we wrap up year two here in New York, and it feels like a little bit of a disappointing season. Now, clearly we are trending in the right direction, but I just don't know if there's quite enough momentum for me to keep this entire core intact barring some sort of Cinderella playoff run, but we'll find out. It is back-to-back -back MVPs for the Miami Heat this time. Mr. Dwayne Wade getting it done. Kawhi Leonard is in Milwaukee. He is your Rookie of the Year. Gilbert Arenas, Sixth Man of the Year. Dwight Howard is your depoy. Steph Curry, Most Improved. And Tibbs, Second Straight Coach of the Year. Man won 65 games this time. God damn. I guess that's what happens when you play all your players 48 minutes a night. Um, we are the five seed. So, I mean, again, slight improvement, which it, it really doesn't feel like it's a slight improvement. It, it almost feels worse because all the moves we made this offseason really didn't result in many more wins. So, I don't know, man. We're going to find out and uh, time will tell. I mean, it's going to be a kind of a, a whole thing about how this playoff run goes. So, it is us and the Atlanta Hawks here in the first round. Mike Bibby, Joe Johnson, Josh Smith, Andre Karolinko, Al Horford. Not my favorite first round matchup. I think they are a better team. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you guys. But we are up 2-1 right now. And they do tie it up 2-2. We go up 3-2. And we've gone back and forth every single game. So win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. Keep on the same track. We move on to the next round. And we don't do that. We get bounced in the first round. Not great. Celtics go on to win it all. Kevin Garnett at age, what, 36? Yep, finals MVP. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, clearly, this has not been acceptable so far. We have not been happy with the success that we've had. Our success, put that in quotes. I guess, and uh, some decisions will be made. Same with some changes. I mean, we just we can't run this back, right? It's just 
It's not going to work for me. Uh, I know damn well we don't have any draft picks because I traded almost all of them for Monta Ellis, who was relatively good for us. I'm not going to sit here and say he wasn't. I can't get a better head coach than Mike Stauffer, so clearly firing him is not going to do anything. But um, yeah, we'll head up to the draft where I'm almost sure. Stand by that. We don't have any draft picks. We will now head up to team player options. We have nobody, and we are going to have some free agents, starting out with Danilo Gallinari, who in all likelihood is going to be a sign-and-trade piece for me. Quite honestly, it's just nothing. It, this doesn't move me, right? And then I think I can get somebody better. So uh, DJ Augustine could be a good, or could, is a good bench point card for me. This is a fun free agent class. Unfortunately, we just don't really have the dollars to go with it. So, oh, good. Good job, 2K. I don't have bird rights in anybody. Great product you put out there every single year. Um, okay, so now comes the decision on what we want to do with the rest of this roster. Because I think there's a couple different avenues we can go. There clearly is some talented players here. I just don't know if they fit very well next to each other. So let's see what we can do with maybe in the trade market. First big trade of the offseason is going to come with the Memphis Grizzlies. Raymond Felton, Sasha Vujicic in a 2014 second round pick. For Mr. Mike Conley, who's 24 years old at an 87 overall, coming off a year of averaging 21 points and 9 assists per game. Why this is a trade offer, I have absolutely no idea. Maybe Memphis wants to clear up cap space. I honestly don't blame you, but we're clearly getting the best player in this trade, and it is an upgrade that we desperately needed. So now comes the question, do him and Monte Ellis fit in a backcourt together? And I think my gut reaction is no. I don't really think they fit very well next to each other. Now, maybe if I look back on the Monte Ellis trade, I probably don't do it again. I think that was a gross trade, honestly. I think I overpaid. I think we all can probably agree on that. And uh, I, I just have to decide what I want to do with them because six foot three and six foot one probably isn't exactly great. Now, could I maybe get away with it? Probably. But if there's a better trade out there for Ellis, I might go ahead and take it. And uh, yeah, just kind of regret all the draft picks I gave away. We are hopefully making up for the mistake that we made just last offseason when I gave away four first round draft picks for Mr. Monte Ellis. And now I'm not going to sit here and tell you he didn't necessarily play well because I think he overall wise he had a good season. I just think I overpaid and it's really limiting us to the moves that I am able to make. So we're going to make a deal with Chicago. Monte Ellis and a 2015 second are going there for Carlos Boozer, who is 30 years old. Maybe we might see an overall or two in terms of his regression, but I'm not necessarily worried about it. He's coming off a year of 19 points, nearly 11 rebounds a game. I can get over it. So, Boozer's going to come in, be my starting power forward. You might be asking yourself, well, what are you doing with Amari Stoudemire? It's really simple. I just moved into the center spot. The overall didn't even change. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my goal there. I don't really think Stoudemire is going to have any sort of significant drop-off while well, he's the starting center. So, uh, it means Andrew Bogut is officially on the trade market, and I am definitely going to have to find some sort of deal for him, and then we're going to have to figure out what the hell we're going to do with Wilson Chandler. Not Wilson Chandler, excuse me, Danilo Gallinari after that. So, if it's a small forward that I'm getting back in the deal, it means Gallinari is probably getting moved. If it's a shooting guard, maybe I hold on to Gallinari. I don't really want to, but I maybe could be convinced. So Joakim Noah is here. It's an option. Don't really need a center. Would be fun, though. Let's see. I'm looking for either a small forward or a shooting guard. There's really no other need on this team right now, and I'm not really seeing any offers for anybody who's elite at that position, which is a little bit unfortunate. So I'm going to have to work on something a different way. This is the deal we're making. I don't love it. I don't even really like it, but we're going to have to live with it. Andrew Bogut, a 2016 first, which is our last first round pick, by the way, and a 2016 second going to Indiana for Danny Granger and Dante Jones. Now, Danny Granger is a good player. Do not get me wrong. I don't necessarily love that this is kind of our final piece to the puzzle or what we're kind of assuming is going to be our final piece of the puzzle. So uh, it is a trade we are going to make, though. It's a trade we kind of have to make. And it's one we're definitely going to have to live with. So now my only concern, my, my only question, if you will, is what is it going to cost me to get Danilo Gallinari back? And then what is the trade going to look like when I do inevitably make it? So I'd like to get Boris Dio back. I definitely don't want to renounce his rights. Um, am, am I allowed to re-sign my own players? Okay, so it's going to let me bring Dio back. Is it going to let me bring back Augustine? It looks like it is. Hopefully I get them both back. I do. And then just don't renounce Gallo. So we're good there. Uh, I'm going to wait to see what sort of contract Danilo Gallinari gets. I don't think the game's going to allow me to re-sign him. It doesn't look like it is. I'll just confirm that. Uh, it is not. So he has offers, though. I'll just match whatever one he gets. And then he's going to be traded for some sort of shooting guard. He's going to go to the Timberwolves. Three-year, $25 million deal. He is going to be traded pretty much immediately. I didn't find a trade for a shooting guard, but I'm doing this a little bit of a... Uh, in a way that maybe isn't the best and the most logical. But Danilo Gallinari, Dante Jones, and our last remaining second-round pick are going to Charlotte for Gerald Wallace, who is 30, and a 2016 first. Now, my hope in this is that I'm going to be able to re-trade Gerald Wallace and just that first-round pick and hopefully land some sort of shooting guard. It's literally my last hope. And, uh, yeah, it's not going well so far. Oh, man. Um, okay, so you know what? I'm going to have to find out a different way to kind of go about this, which means that there is a distinct possibility that I carry this into next season 
and find that trade then. I think it's probably what's going to end up happening. It's something I don't do very often, but I sometimes end up living with my own mistakes. And unfortunately, it's just the reality of the situation we are in right now. So I need to find a backup center and a backup small forward. My options are probably relatively limited. Ryan Hollins, oh my God. Might be what I have to work with here. I see Drew Gooden, who could be a di- another decent signing. Actually, wouldn't mind that. The man is six foot ten. Might as well take a flyer on him, right? It can't hurt at this point. I don't think anything could. Uh, Dio six eight, Gooden six ten. The overall doesn't change, so he'll be our backup center moving forward. And uh, yeah, just kind of moving on with this rebuild right now. I know we don't have a backup small forward because again, I'm going to go ahead and trade. Um, whatever the hell his name is, I'm just blanking on names right now. I'm going to go ahead and trade Gerald Wallace next season. I mean, he is only six foot seven. Maybe what happens to his overall, right? Goes down one. I'm going to keep him on the roster until I sim up to next season. And then if I don't get a trade, that's when I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, just flip him at that point. So, yep, I know you all probably hate me for doing this, but I need to figure out a backup small forward. I've already screwed up this rebuild enough, and I'm not going to be the reason that we fail again heading into next season. So, let's see what we have here for... Wait, what? Oh, excuse me, Stevenson. Uh, no, I want to hold on to this. I need a small forward. Somebody, anybody, please. Rudy Fernandez is six foot six. Could be an option for me. Chandler Parsons is only 23. Maybe he'll go up a few overalls. Oh, man. How tall is Brandon Rush? He's six six as well. Ah, oh, fuck it. I'll just take Rudy Fernandez. Um, I'll see you guys at the start of next season. We have our shooting guard, and it is a young man named DeMar DeRozan. He turned out to be a pretty good basketball player. So we're sending two first round picks, Gerald Wallace and Carlos Arroyo, to Toronto for DeRozan. And we're also getting Jarrett Jack back in the deal. Now, Jarrett Jack could be another trade piece for me, potentially. I think we could maybe find an upgrade. I think we're pretty much comfortable everywhere. I just don't know. I mean, maybe do I want a new backup center? I think it's a distinct possibility. Also, I haven't moved Rudy Fernandez to the backup small forward spot yet. Maybe I just do that. I mean, again, we're getting pieces in this deal that I didn't necessarily think was going to actually happen. So, Fernandez, I don't know. Is there a small forward out there? Um, doesn't have to be anybody. Elites by any wow, I can get Raymond Felton back for basically nothing. I mean, this is just ridiculous that Raymond Felton's that low of an overall or that low of a cost, if you will. Um, Charlie Villanueva, not really a small point. It's like every time I'm looking for a specific position, I can't find it. Corey Brewer could be fun. Fuck it, we'll pick up Corey Brewer. Um, so we're going to trade for Brewer, which means we now have even more depth. He actually goes up to an 81 overall at the backup small forward spot. And now we also have Luke Ridenauer sitting here. Do I want to include him in a trade with Drew Gooden and see if I can find an upgrade at the backup center spot? I mean, what the hell not? If I can't, then I'll just run with the guys that we have. If I do, all the better. So centers. Antoine Jamison is 36. He's six foot nine. Jesus, the man was averaging 20 a game last year. You're giving him up like he's nothing. <sighs> I don't know what's going to happen happen to his overall, but you know what? I'm going to risk it. I'm going to do it. I don't really care at this point, to be quite honest. Um, So Jamison and Diaw, 6'9", center. uh, Doesn't really change his overall. What the hell? He's going to be my backup center. Let me move positions around, set the rotation, and then I'll show you guys it. After a turbulent and disappointing second season in New York, we decided to make some major change. It is very, very rare that I basically do a complete 180 and entirely flip a roster in one single offseason. But I did it today. And honestly, I think it was probably for the best. Because that team was not winning anything. I take full responsibility for the Monte Ellis disaster. And uh, it was my fault. And again, that's not saying Monte played bad for us. I just think I overpaid for him. Resulting in me not having as many assets. Resulting in worse trades in the long run. So that's kind of my thought process there. But this team is actually shaping up pretty well. I think there's a chance it could be a championship contender. So we've uh, we've done pretty well, if you will. Mike Conley, DeMar DeRozan, Danny Granger, Carlos Boozer, Mari Stoudemire, who actually is the only starter coming back from last season. Bench unit has also gotten better with Corey Brewer now as their sixth man. Antoine Jamison came in. We got him for nothing. The man averaged 20 a game last year. I still can't believe it. Boris Diaw going to be our backup power forward. You got DJ Augustine in here and then Aaron Aflal rounding out this 10-man rotation. So it is a good team. There's quality depth here, which, of course, I always like. You guys know that. It's just whether or not we have the star power to go out and beat the Heat, beat the Bulls, beat the Celtics. We'll find out. I'll see you guys at the end of year number three. I guess we made the right moves at the right time because we by far just had the greatest season of this video. And I know it's only three, but 65 and 17 speaks for itself. I can definitely take it. Now, are we going to win a championship? Because that's all that really matters in the grand scheme of things. I don't know. We'll find out. Derek Rose, 30 points, 6 rebounds, 10 assists. Good enough for an MVP. Sounds good enough to me. Anthony Davis, your rookie of the year. He is in Minnesota. Monte Ellis is a sixth man in Chicago. 
and he is, uh, yeah, still playing at a very good level. Dwight Howard is a Golden State Warrior. He wins Defensive Player of the Year. Jeremy Lin, most improved in Boston. And Mike Stauffer does win Coach of the Year as we do go 65-17. and 17. So, you know, I, I, I'm probably going to get some shit for completely doing a 180 on the roster. And it's very well deserved. That Monte Ellis trade was a disaster. I think a few other of the moves that I made were not necessarily great, but this team... Kind of came together. We've got a lot of guys who can score the basketball here, and I think it's going to be a very, very fun playoff ride. Hopefully a very, very successful one at that. So it is us in Indiana here in the first round. Darren Collison, J.R. Smith, Paul George, Tyler Hansborough, Andrew Bogut, our old friend. Roy Hibbert is here. Jason Richardson is there. Carl Landry. So there's a lot of depth there, and it definitely makes me a little bit nervous, but I do think we are the better team, and we're going to go out and prove that. As uh, Yeah, we're up 3-1 right now, and we do close them out in five. We're moving on to the Washington Wizards, who have a 91 overall John Wall. Nick Young is here. Bojan Bogdanovic, Trevor Booker, JaVale McGee. This team doesn't really move me too much, quite honestly. We win in six, and now come the Chicago Bulls. We've completely avoided the Miami Heat somehow throughout the entirety of this rebuild, mostly because we sucked the first two seasons. But that's neither here nor there. Derrick Rose has won an MVP. The man's a 98 overall. Brandon Rush, Lou Aldang, Robin Lopez, Joakim Noah. God, I don't know how Monte Ellis is not starting. I don't know. Maybe they just want a good score in the second unit, but... That's a dumb decision, in my opinion. We are down 2-1 right now, though. We tie it up 2-2. That's a big game. This is an even bigger game, and we're in the finals. We are in the finals. We are taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I don't know if we have a chance in this series. I mean, there is a 95, a 92, a 97, all three of which, by the way, have won MVPs. So, I don't know what's going to happen here. If we win, I would think it's an upset. If we don't, I'm not going to be too disappointed. But uh, we're up 3-1. We are up 3-1. And are we going to get this done here in our final season? Oh my God. Oh my God. This might be the greatest turnaround I've ever had in a rebuild. We went from basically dead, no draft picks, not a lot of talent on the team. There's talent. There's not a lot of valuable talent on the team to a championship. And 12 and 10 is a finals MVP for Mike Conley. Just kind of makes up and kind of explains this video. But yeah, man, this was a crazy one. You know, sometimes these videos go in different directions than I've originally kind of intended them to. And this was definitely one of them. But. It was fun. It was a challenge. You know, it's not very often that these re rebuilds end up being, like, really challenging, but this was one of them. There was a lot of trades that didn't go through that I just didn't end up showing you. But, uh, yeah, this is a fun one. I've been recording for an hour and 16 minutes. I have no idea how long this video is, but I'm assuming it's a long one. So that is it for me, man. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.